A month ago, my family took a trip to San Francisco. Right now, we're at the Gaza Place, the kids' place. <laughs> I was looking for a ham club in San Francisco to just meet up with and check out what they do in San Francisco because, you know, I don't know what people do in different places that they exist in. I left a message on the phone number for the website for the Chinatown Amateur Radio Club in San Francisco. And the person who called me back is the creator of this antenna. Edison, his name is Edison, just like my old, uh, my youngest son, Edison Fong called me back, the maker of the Ed Fong roll-up J-pole and other antennas. And we talked for a while. Now, unfortunately, they didn't have anything going on that weekend, but we talked about his antenna, among other things, and my video that I made comparing his antennas to some of the other J-poles. And he told me a fundamental secret, something I did not do in my first video. So today we are going to amend what could be a fatal error in my testing approach with what Edison recommended that we do. So let's get started setting this whole thing up. Obligatory boilerplate explanation of what I'm doing here. I'm using a software-defined radio. This is an SDR play. This is an example. I'm using a different one behind me, but I'm listening to two frequencies, on one on two meters and one on 70 centimeters. I'm simultaneously recording signal-to-noise ratio, which is a number. The higher the number, the better, and I'm recording the received audio. That's going to give us a reading on how loud I am transmitting into my home station when I'm at the park. The highest signal to noise ratio antenna is going to be the best performing on transmit. That's what we're testing today. I don't expect any difference on the receive side of this antenna, so I'm linking my old j -Pole video there as well if you'd like to go see the receive side. But I did make a change for transmit, and this was the recommendation from Edison Fong. So here is my one of my telescoping mass. Inside of here is nested little pieces, rods that get bigger and bigger and bigger as you go along until you get to the really thick ones, right? Telescoping. This telescoping mass being made of carbon fiber, many people believe that wire antennas or things like j pole antennas will interact with the carbon fiber when it's right up against it. So Edison's comment was the right way to set up his antennas and other J-poles is to tilt your mass 45 degrees. So that the J-pole just comes off vertically and there's and you get better isolation from the antenna and the mass. And that's exactly what I did. You'll see here, uh, the camera angle is a little funky. It's pointing at it and the 45 degree angle is pointing away from the camera. But trust me when I say we have full isolation. Now, something else of note when I'm recording the audio with my little SDR here, I am recording with squelch on. The reason for that is if I record with squelch off, if I'm away from the house for multiple hours, I come back to 95% of a very large file recording of just static and just noise. So for that reason and the sake of my hard drive space, I just record with squelch on. Now, the good news is, is that I still have the SNR values if we miss anything for any of the bands. So while I may not have an audio recording, I will have an SNR value for the appropriate time that we were transmitting. All right, first up is the Nelson antenna J-pole. This came to me from Carlos, Life at Terminal Velocity. Thank you, Carlos, for sending the antenna to take a look at. I forgot what the name was of it, and I don't remember uh, when Carlos kind of told me about it. I just got a package from him. It had the antenna in it, and I went, oh, goody. The issue is that on the Velcro strap, it says Monoprice. So I was calling it the Monoprice antenna. It is the Nelson antenna, and I will post a link in the description so you can find it. So first, we're going to do a baseline test with the Signal Stuff Signal Stick. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. This is a baseline test signal stuff signal stick with the uh, HT at 12.15 p.m. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, 70 centimeters at 12.15 p.m. with the baseline signal stuff signal stick test. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, test with the mono price J pole, mono price J pole. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, mono price J pole at 12.15 p.m. Test, test, test. How we sound? That's antenna one, the mono price. Let's pull it down, maybe. For me, it's a split decision on which one I like more, the mono price or the Ed Fong. 
Edfong uh, comes with an extra bit of jumper so that you can just use the amount of coax you want, whereas the Monoprice has a very long coax that it comes with, which I'm now bundling up. And you probably get 10 to 15 feet, depending on uh, how it's configured when you get it. Which for some of you, that could be nice. For others, it's just more stuff. It's more bulk, right, that you have to pack. Although this is not bad at all to pack. It's got a little hook and loop strap, and boom. There you go. All right. My Edfong, I take everywhere with me. That's why I've got this gear snake. I will try and find this gear snake and put a link in the description. This is my all-star for ham radio operation. I use gear snake more than anything. It's a thin, thickish wire actually, covered in a really thick rubber material. And it allows you to twist and twi turn it. It's like a reusable twist tie. And I use that to hold up antenna mass and whatnot. I always keep some with J-poles for that purpose. And along with it, I always make sure that we have an S-clip, which I do know where to get these. These are on Amazon, and the link is in the description. These are important. Those little holes, you see those little holes there? Can you see the holes? You poke that hole through the smaller tips on your telescoping mass, and that's what you hold things up with. Easy. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing the Ed Fong J pole on 2 meters. 2 meters. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing the Ed Fong J pole on 70 centimeters. 70 centimeters at 12.17 p.m. So you can see wrapping up J pole here. Ed Fong, really easy to take with you everywhere. And hit it with the wrap. And then do that. Done. All right, now we get to the big boys, which you can see the bulk goes up significantly with the bigger antennas. This is the N9TAX, beloved antenna by many, but a little big. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing with the N9 TAX antenna on 2 meters at 12.20, 12.20 p.m. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing with the N9 TAX on 70 centimeters at 12.20, 12.20 p.m. So the N9 TAX has the much thicker twin lead, which Ed Fong, when I spoke with him on the phone, uh, said that this is probably going to be the delimiting factor on which one performs better on 70 centimeters, the width of that twin lead, and I will verify that with him when I inevitably talk to him on a live stream. Look forward to that. The N9TAX includes a little choke. That's a nice touch. I do like that. So, you know, different type of setup for different types of folks. You guys decide. You can get these on eBay. I'll link the, uh, I'll put the link in the video description here at the end. Now, <laughs> I got to include it. It's a part of the test. I've got nothing really against this. Uh, there's some things I don't like about it, some choices that were made. Performance-wise, it's okay. This is the JP2U J-Pole from Radio Waves. The, the major issue I have with it is this um, length of cordage that they use. It's really thin, like Dacron line. Uh, it is a thin twin lead, right? The thin twin lead. But then it goes all the way up to RG8 and then into a PL259, which you then you have to use an adapter. It's just weird choices. Not really portable, but that's what these are designed for most of the time. Ah! I just launched that clip. <laughs> Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing with the radio waves J pole antenna at 1225, actually 1223 p.m. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6, Six November Alpha Zulu testing with the radio waves J pole antenna at 1222. All right, new and improved testing methodology. I'm curious what the numbers are going to be. Let's go check them out. Color me absolutely shocked here, everybody. Let's just go down the list. Uh, you can see that looking at the VFO frequency, that the two meter frequencies all these antennas performed much, much better in. Two to three times better when considering their SNR value, which is shown here in decibels, that's the dB. 
Ed Fong at the top with 36.6 dB, followed by N9TAX, which is exactly what we saw in the last testing. This was at the canted 45 degree angle though, so that was all you know well and good. I was happy to do the test in a, in a more novel approach. But flipping things around, when we look at 70 centimeters, the Ed Fong just takes an absolute dive to the point that it's performing a little bit like handheld antennas. This sent me on a tailspin because I ended up going home and pulling out my antenna analyzer, setting up the pretty much all the antennas at home, including the Nelson, because the Nelsons didn't even make the list, right? So, so what did I find? Well, the first is that these antennas are susceptible to anything that's metallic can affect these antennas. And the height of the antenna is also vitally important when looking at not just the SWR, but also our resistance and resonance plots that we can do with our antenna analyzer. So here is an example. Here is the Ed Fong antenna closer to the ground. We're taking an SWR plot on two meters and then compare that to the R and X value. R, we're looking for a value of 50 a 50 ohm resistance antenna, which is what we generally use for amateur radio. Now the X value, look at that X value. We want that closer to zero. As closer to zero as possible is going to be the most effective, best match and most capable antenna assuming that resistance is also within 50 ohms of what we're you know looking for. When I brought that antenna up to about 20 feet, now look at that two meter plot and let's also take a look at that R and X plot. Considerable difference. So that means that depending on the height above ground, just the ground composition alone, the materials, metallic, mostly metallic, but I don't even know, I'd put trees up against that in some cases, not just for the blocking that they may do for RF, but the actual resonance of the antenna and where the resonance spots are can be slightly varied or modified. Very intriguing. I I have two Ed Fong antennas. I ended up testing them both and got similar results on two meters and 70 centimeters, but I, I'm not I'm not sure where I sit with all of this. This is really wild information. But let's let's talk about this. The difference between DB just between the N9 TAX and the Ed Fong on 70 centimeters is is not that far off. Um, so I don't know, guys. I, I really don't know. I'm going to leave you in the comments to figure out what you think is going on. And then we'll revisit this again. And I will likely also talk to Mr. Ed Fong in a upcoming live stream to get to the bottom of what's going on. That's going to do it for me out here on this video. Thanks for watching my practical ham radio gear tests out in the park. I'm Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Would love it if you gave me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. And until I talk to you again, 73.